with some. Let's read the scripture for today. It's Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 11 to 14. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that he who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. I, I think this sermon is about confidence and confidence when we define it it means we're certain. Confidence is the state or quality of being certain. Sometimes we can be confident in ourselves. We say, I'm self-confident. And we trust in ourselves. But sometimes we can put our trust and faith in another person or another truth. And, and, and I think this makes a difference whether our confidence is from ourselves or if our confidence is from another. See, I, I looked up the word confide yesterday, which is where we get confidence. And, and confide means I'm trusting in another person. I'm confiding in them. I'm trusting them with my secrets. I'm, but I'm giving my secrets to another. And um, to confide means we trust in another. <coughs> and, um, we trust in them. We have faith in them. Now, when I was um, young, one of the things I did when I was a kid is I took some rocks and I, and I threw them at a hornet's nest. And of course, the hornets came back and started stinging me on the head with the other kids I was with. We shouldn't be surprised if a wasp stings. Uh, another time I was walking by this dog. I can't remember if they were barking or not, but, but the dog, it, it bit me on the leg. And we, sh we should not be surprised when a dog bites. That's what a dog does. I, um, I, I went skateboarding down a mountain after that. It was in Colorado. This mountain road was very steep. I got on my skateboard and I went down and I slipped. We should not be surprised that skateboards slip. That's what they do. See, there are times of cause and effect where we should not be surprised that something acts according to its nature. You know, dogs bite, bees sting, skateboards slip. This is obvious. We should not be surprised that this is what they do. Um, health is also a matter of cause and effect. 
20 years ago, my stomach bulged out of my legs. Um, I spent 10 days in the hospital. 12 years ago, I was riding the bike in Kwangju by Kwangju Yok. My bike hit the car and my finger was broken. I spent a week in the hospital. Eight years ago, I was in Tokyo and my bike, it flipped over. I flipped in the air and I bruised my kidney and I spent a night in the hospital. We should not be surprised that with age, our body is weaker and weaker. Day by day, minute by minute, our body is like a clock. And every bruise, every strike, every injury, it's like the hands of the clock. And they keep going day by day. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. The plan of him who works out everything. Well, um, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to, and then the plan of him who works out everything. Um, everything has its order. Everything. Um, all these details. Um, the, the day I slipped. Um, the day the bee stung me. Every hospital visit. Everything that I ever did, from throwing rocks at the hornet's nest, slipping on my skateboard, to flipping over the bike in Tokyo, God knew them. God saw them. God knows them before we do. God sees them. God knows us before we know ourselves. God works out everything. So, um, we could say in Ephesians 1.11, the plan of him who works out everything. But you, say, you don't know everything that was going on this week. The problems I had at school. Or, or the, the, the friend, my friend who's in the hospital. Or, or my child is sick. Or I have a problem with my job. You don't know everything that's going on in my life. See, from, from Monday to um, Saturday, we focus on everything. For, uh, you know, I, I need to focus on everything. I'm so busy with it. Everything, everything, everything. Life is everything that we have to do. But Sunday, see, everything is on the right. And all week, we've just been focusing on everything. But on Sunday, my job is to point you to the plan of Him. Sunday, we focus, there is a plan of Him. 
It's a reminder. We move from the busyness of everything and we focus there is a plan with everything. God is greater than everything. And the plan of God connects Him with our lives. God works out everything according to his plan. So some days, nothing may seem clear, but God's plan is clear. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, um, and I have last week's scripture here too, the plan of him. See, we have right here the plan of him. God is our Father. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Ephesians 1 4 God our Father loves us. Ephesians 1 4 For he chose us in him. He, God our Father, chose us. Mm. Ephesians 1 4 and 5 in love, He, God our Father, predestined us to be adopted as sons and daughters. God our Father, Ephesians 1 5. In love, He predestined us to be adopted as His sons and daughters. So, to, to put this more plainly, Ephesians 1.3, who has blessed us in Christ? God our Father. Ephesians 1.4, who has chosen us in Christ, God our Father. Ephesians 1, um, 8, who has lavished his grace on us, God our Father. So when we come back to Ephesians 1, 11, the plan of him, our Father has a plan. Our Father in heaven has a plan. God our Father has an eternal plan. Ephesians 1.11, the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. So, if our body is like a clock, day by day, and every bruise and injury and wound is like a minute that has passed by on this clock, we, we might ask, does God really understand me? Does God really care about me? 38 years ago, I, I drank a fifth of schnapps, or I drank a bottle of Mad Dog Plum Wine, and I was throwing up in a dormitory toilet. 
did God really care about me? 20 years ago, when my stomach was bulging out, and I went to the, to the doctors in Chumdan, and they poked at me like I was an old piece of fried samgyeopsal. Did God really care about me? When, I'm, when I don't think God cares, does God really care about us when it seems like our days say no? If God has a plan, how grew, what is so great about this plan? Actions speak louder than words. You know, if my house is on fire, and, and I call the fire department, my house is on fire. And the fire department says, oh, well, yeah, we're going to send a fire truck. Yes, we're going to do it. We're going to send a fire truck to you. But the fire truck never comes. You know, I say, your words didn't mean anything. You know, actions matter. Actions matter more than words. My house is on fire. Send a fireman. I need help. If my house needs rescuing, send help. Oh. But when the fireman comes, the actions speak. When the fireman comes and puts out the fire, when the fireman comes and rescues people from my house, firemen come to rescue from fire. When the fire truck shows up, we say, thank you. You've come to rescue me in my distress. Ephesians 1.11, the plan of Him. The plan of God is Jesus Christ. God acted. God sent His Son. God sent a rescuer for us. Jesus is like this fireman and the earth is on fire with sin. God cared about us by sending a rescuer to us. It was his plan. Christ. Christ does not invade our world. Christ invades our despair. When we say no one cares. Christ came to rescue us from our despair. So, God's plan. The Father's plan is the obedience of His Son, Jesus. It's called the cross. The title of today's sermon, The Cross and the Inheritance. The cross is the Father's plan. He planned it from before eternity. The cross is the Son, Jesus' obedience. See, all these ends, Ephesians 1.7, in Him we have redemption through, through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins. In Him we were chosen. In order, Ephesians 1.12, we who were the first to hope in Christ. Ephesians 1.13, you also were included in Christ. You were marked in Him with a seal. See, all of these 
chosen in him, hope in him, included in him, marked in him. God rescues. If, if we don't think we need a rescuer, this plan may not make sense to us. But if we think we need a rescuer, Jesus came to rescue. See, what is sin? Sin is a thief. When, when sin comes into your house, you know, if it's midnight and someone knocks on my door and I say, oh, who are you? And he says, well, I'm the thief. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> well, Mr. Thief, please come in and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, and, and, and the thief, he, he begins to take my wallet. That's what thieves do. <laughs> thieves steal. Sin steals. And if I talk with this thief and he says, oh, I, I need to take your shirt. Fine, Mr. Thief, take it. Oh, you've got steak in the refrigerator. I need to take that too. Fine, Mr. Thief. Nice to meet you. Let's have coffee. Thieves steal. Sin steals. Um, but, but sin, hey, thief, we're buds, but you're stealing from me. You're making my life empty. Um, sin is like a zero that multiplies everything in our life. Sin times well, zero times one. Zero. Zero times ten. Zero. It, it doesn't matter if it's zero times a hundred, a thousand, a million, a billion, a hundred billion. Zero. Sin is this zero by everything in our life. So it doesn't matter what we have or how great a pile of junk we have stored up. Sin is zero. Sin. What does sin look like? Sin looks like death. Sin is just a black maw. It is hell's throat. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 15 and 16. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. The grave is never satisfied. Death is never full. And the fire never says enough. Sin is a fire that burns everything in our life. Sin is a thief that steals everything in our life. So, in Christ, Ephesians 1.11, in Him we were also chosen. God's plan is to save us from one thing, sin. All of these ends, Ephesians 1.7, in Him. Ephesians 1.11, in Him. Ephesians 1.12, hope in Christ. See, 
when, when this thief is in our house, what should I do? I don't make coffee for the thief. I call the police officer. And when the police officer comes, the thief either runs away or the police officer shoots him dead. If a thief is stealing from everything in my house, I, I call a police officer and I say, you need to rescue me. I need you now. There's a thief in my house now. Sin steals. The devil steals. John chapter 10, verse 10. The devil comes to steal and kill and destroy. But this in him, uh, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. All of this in him, in him, in him. Jesus is a tower. Jesus is a wall of righteousness to those who trust in him. Jesus, no thief can enter a house that Jesus is in. No thief can enter this house in him. We are saved when we abide in Christ. See, all of this, Ephesians 1.3, praise, um, pray, praise be to the God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, to the praise of his glorious grace. Praise comes from confiding. Praise comes from trusting. Our soul finds rest in Christ. We abide in Christ. Christ gave his life for us by dying on the cross for our sins. And we run to him. I want to be in him. I want to put my faith in him. Nothing can protect me from sin but Jesus in him. He is the tower we run to. He is the place where we are safe. Um, but At the cross, we die to sin. At the cross, we find forgiveness. Ephesians 1, 7, redemption through his blood. And the plan of God, Ephesians 1, 11, the plan of him, of God our Father, is the cross. God saves us from sin at the cross. God acted in sending his son for us. Jesus acted in obeying the Father and coming to rescue us. Today is the day to run to Christ. Today is the day to say, I'm going to live in this t strong tower and flee from sin. 
It makes no sense to enter a strong tower and then leave it again. You're safe there. In Christ we put our trust. In Christ we are safe. So, so far this sermon has been about Ephesians 1.11, the plan of Him and how God has acted for us by sending His Son. Um, so far it has been about Him and the plan. But, where do we fit in with this? Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation for all people. See, what, what we're doing today, Jesus is preached to all people. We can go to Japan, and China, and Korea, and Africa, and the United States, and Europe. You'll find Jesus is preached to all people. This Jesus is hope. He is holy and blameless for all people. See, Ephesians 1.11, in Him, we were also chosen. See, Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 is the one the Father loves. The Father chose Jesus because Jesus loves the Father. The Father said of Jesus, Matthew 17, 5, This is my beloved Son. This in Him, we were chosen. In Him, we were also chosen. From eternity and before eternity, this in Him is God's choice for us. God, He, he rejected a world in sin. But He had a plan. In Him, we were chosen. This is God's choice for you. This is God's choice for everyone around you. God's choice is for us. God's choice is for everyone around us. Oh, I don't like that person. Oh, they're so terrible. I don't get along with them. I, I, don't, I don't like them. God is for them. Jesus is God's choice for all people. Um, Jesus chose Jesus who is without sin. For us who are dead in sin. God chose Jesus who obeyed. For us who disobeyed. God's love gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. But this choice is for all of us. But where, where is our part? Ephesians 1, 11. In Him, we were also. 
that there, there's that word at Ephesians 1.11. We were also chosen. I, I need to back up a little bit before we start this part because I need to finish God's plan. That there's more to God's plan that we need to know. Let's see. 2 Corinthians 5.14 For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all. Therefore, all died. Oh, oh, where is that? And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. See, 2 Corinthians 5.15 What is God's plan? God raised Jesus from the tomb. See, first thing God did, God acted. He sent Jesus to die. He sent Jesus. God acted. Jesus went to the cross for us. And at the grave, because we all will face death. We all will face the grave. How do I know God is for me? An empty grave. Actions speak louder than words. God rescued us. God rescued us from sin. God rescues us from death. God's plan. Jesus obeyed to death. Jesus conquered with life. We look up. We look ahead to a risen Savior. See, what is our inheritance? Um, we have Ephesians chapter 1, verse... Mm. 14, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. An inheritance is what we look ahead to. An inheritance is what we already have. Because parents, they, they write out an inheritance and they say, this is what I'm giving my children. When, when your father signs his will and I says, I'm giving this to you, well, we have to wait, but the inheritance is already ours. And in Jesus Christ, our inheritance is an empty tomb. And in Jesus Christ, our inheritance is eternal life. God acted for us three times. John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And the one who lives and believes in me will never die. This is God's plan. This is our inheritance. Psalm 
So, so if this sermon began with God our Father and His plan, and God's plan is Jesus Christ, who conquered sin for us, who conquered death for us, the next part of this sermon is the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13 And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. See, this Ephesians 1.11, in him, God had a plan for the whole world. Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5.14, we are convinced that one died for all. God loved the whole world. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. The grace of God that brings salvation is coming, has appeared to all men. God is for you. God cares about you. God has a plan for you. But God's plan for us, Ephesians 1, 11, it says also, in him you also were chosen. See, mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 13, you also were included in Christ when? You heard the word, uh, the words of truth. Ephesians 1.13 You also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. See, the gospel is from my lips. But the gospel is the Holy Spirit. Your ears can hear my lips. Maybe because of Korean and English, it's hard to understand. But your heart hears the Holy Spirit. My words don't do you any good if you don't hear the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1.13 And you were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 Faith comes from hearing, and hearing is from the Word of God. Have faith, confide, abide, trust in what God has done for you. Um, Christ died from our sins on the cross, Christ rose from the dead to give us life. And, and, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, our inheritance, it's on the back side of your bulletin, for we know that if this earthly tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, 
not built by human hands. For while we are in this tent, God calls our present life living in a tent. Amen. People who are in a tent know that it's temporary. It's not permanent. This tent, God will raise it. We live in a mortal body. God promises us an eternal body. Ephesians, um, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 4. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened. See, every injury, every bee sting, every hospital visit, every injury to our soul, to our body. In this life, we groan. God's saying the clock's ticking. This life is passing away. God's using everything. Because we... For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but clothed instead with a heavenly dwelling. Our inheritance is a heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up with life. Jesus is the firstborn among many brothers. Hebrews 12, 23. God acted for us by dying for our sins. God acted for us when Jesus rose from the dead. God gave us life. And God bids us to trust in Him and what He has done for us. But the Holy Spirit Truth, God's love sent His Son. Truth, God's love sends the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is working now. And you were included in Christ when the Holy Spirit is putting truth in your soul. We, we can spend our days, and I'm thinking about everything, everything, everything. But the Holy Spirit is saying, look at the plan. Look at the plan. Look at the plan. God's plan for you is His Son. God's plan for you is life in His Son. Go to God's Son. The Holy Spirit is always working. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. If you had responded to my rebuke, I would have poured out my heart to you. See, the Holy Spirit works. You were included in Christ when God is waiting for you to hear that when. The Holy Spirit works if, Proverbs 1.23, if you had responded to my rebuke. See, what God gives today is the word of truth. God came if the word of truth proves me a fool, then I'll, then I'll become a fool and take it. 
If the word of truth costs me everything, I'll give everything to have truth. Ephesians 1, 4. Christ was chosen yesterday and eternity before yesterday. Ephesians 1, 13. I was chosen when? When I heard. When Christ, when I took Christ. When I learned truth is not something that's out there for God. Truth is there for me. God gives the gift of truth to live in our heart. Truth. 2 Corinthians 5.1 We have a building from God. An eternal inheritance. An eternal house in heaven. Not built by human hands. See, this is God's plan. So we began this sermon, God our Father has a plan because he loves you. God had a plan before this world was to, and his plan is Jesus Christ. To give Jesus for his sin, our sins. The first part of the sermon was our Father. The second part of the sermon was the Savior, Jesus Christ. And the third part of the sermon was the Holy Spirit saying, you take truth. And the last part of this sermon is we're included. Our church offers truth. The Holy Spirit works in us when we invite people to church to give them truth. Um, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Week by week, year by year, we sing his praises. We proclaim his goodness. Ephesians 1, 9. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ. We share the truth that God has given to us. Jesus was sent to rescue. The Holy Spirit was sent to rescue. And we join in that work of proclaiming God's rescue. And we praise him. For God is acting for us. Let's, um, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the truth. We ask that you would just use our church, that we will proclaim the truth to a world that needs it, and that we would be your people and give your salvation to those around us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.